good afternoon everybody i am going to provide some application part of genetic programming which is uh, widely used for now uh, rather i have used for coastal and ocean problems number of problems are studied uh, using gp and then relatively it is compared with ann approach this is a short outline of presentation some problems based on special mapping of monthly maximum wave heights then storm surge problems so basically uh, for storm surges we carried out study studied based on cause effect modeling and then real time forecasting special mapping also and if time permits then i will say something about uh, tsunami water levels which is first time used by using uh, this technique of gp and uh, ann now the general motivation behind this is ann has been widely used of, uh, widely used uh, for about 15 years for various ocean engineering problems and other problems related to uh, water resources but there are very uh, few applications reported uh, by gp specifically a few applications are there for in water resources but but there are no applications reported in uh, uh, ocean engineering so there was need to develop some alternate approach which may be uh, um, alternate to numerical methods also and uh, recently this ann has been successfully used for so many problems in ocean engineering hence we are presenting here some studies related to ocean engineering and specific use of genetic programming the problem studied here are the special mapping of storm surge wind heights and uh, tsunamis then real time forecasting of storm surges prediction of storm surge through cause cause effect modeling and some of the studies are listed here which i am not going to present here but work has been done on these studies also first thing is special mapping of wave heights rather wave heights now measurement of wind wind generated waves is normally done through wave radar boys or floating boys and this floating boys looks like this where this uh, floating boys transfer uh, all the wave informations to the satellite and satellites to the base stations that way this information is available to us around india there are so many uh, wave, radar, uh, wave radar boy stations uh, deployed by various agencies and uh, this this is uh, this has been developed uh, all over the world particularly in us also and nowadays we are uh, information uh, information is available online uh, through us in agencies now the first problem here is the special mapping of wave heights now this problem pertains to uh, gulf of main basically uh, when uh, we uh, carry out such type of studies uh, wave, wave radar boys or this uh, wave heights are very much essential for uh, various operation coastal operations or uh, other operations offshore operations now when wave radar boy get distracted it is very much difficult to collect the data at that uh, same locations hence uh, we uh, use this technique of gp to uh, prepare a network or to develop a network gp based network where uh, we can uh, hint cast the wave heights of using larger uh, uh, data available as at some locations where the duration is large and the target station where duration is small for that purpose we choose the station of 4400 this station as a target station where data available is only for around 10 years and for other station the data available was around for 27 years hence we develop a gp uh, model to hint cast data at this at this stations and so we we call this as a uh, source station uh, sorry target station for this training on uh, we trained gp model on first 120 months of data and the testing was done on uh, remaining 60 months of data these are the distances available from the coast for this uh, by locations now this study is specifically for northeast of gulf of main where we observed uh, tremendous variations in water levels now we prepared similar kind of model, models using ann also but i have presented here only the gp results now in this case you can observe here this is a time series plot and we could able to model the uh, this wave height up till around 7 meters of height and exactly uh, this model has uh, gp has uh, given a very good results that r is about 0.98 and uh, the errors are also less 
Equivalent comparison studies studied are carried out using ANN also with network of 4 by 6, 4 inputs, then 6 uh, hidden neurons and 1 as output. So we got these results around 0 0.96. So compared to this ANN study, we got the GP results more better. Uh, similar studies for other locations to validate this technique has been carried out and we found that the results are very much encouraging. Then we move to upon uh, another type of problem, uh, storm surge prediction. Now we call it as a storm surge, cyclone or a hurricane. Now basically for this type of study we choose the uh, area of Gulf of Mexico where uh, you observe more uh, variations in water levels. So basically in uh, short, this is storm surge is nothing but a rise in water level cause of heavy winds pushing water along this. Now this figure, figure is self explanatory you can observe here how much this water can get piled up to uh, the coast. This is another figure where you can observe much more destruction happens because of this type of uh, events. And this is another damage caused due to such type of uh, events. Now basically, as I told you, these are the three type of studies I am carrying out. The first one is uh, prediction of storm surge based on the cause effect modeling. Now this figure is self explanatory rather, 2005 hurricane season, you can observe here number of hurricanes occurring in this region. This is 2004 hurricane region, number of uh, storms occurring in this region. So this, this region is very much prone for uh, such type of events. That means people have to model exactly the water level, they have to predict exact level and estimate the uh, approximate, rather approximate water levels. So they, there are many models deployed in this area, but till application of this type of subcomputing tool is always welcome. Now, specifically this study is carried out at particular locations here, this point 42001, deep water and uh, shallow, water, shallow water region. Now initially what I did, because there are no reported applications on this. As far as ANN is concerned, there are two or three applications based on the storm surges. But for GP, there are no applications at all. So initially, I took a single event as a Katrina because normally these events last for seven to ten days. High water level uh, sustained it for seven to eight days. And then uh, prediction is very much important for that. Day. So initially, I took a single event, then model training and testing for the single event. Then I increase observing results of this, I increase number of events for training. I took two events for training and one for testing. And then again, I use uh, hurricane seasons spanning over 2003 to 2005. So 2003, 2004 use for training, sometimes 2003, 2005 for training and remaining entire season for testing. Now, as far as this particular area is concerned, the highest water level recorded in this area is around 14.1 meter. So what 14.1 meter is huge and we could model our uh, GP or GP could model uh, this height exactly with 10 to 11 meters rather when because exactly that height, height is that water level is not recorded as at this particular station. So coming to this problem, these are the results because I have not shown here the results obtained for a single event. These are the results obtained using GP and when the GP or model was trained on uh, two uh, hurricane event and tested on two, uh, one, one single hurricane event that is uh, named as a Katrina at station 42001. Here hourly uh, data was taken into account. Causative factors like wind speed, wind direction, wind gust, and barometric pressure were taken as input and the water rising water level wave heights were taken as a output to the model. So equivalent ANN predictions can show here this uh, correlation as 0.95 and errors compared to this GP as slightly higher. Then another study for cause effect mapping at two stations has been carried out and here we modeled the uh, uh, hurricane seasons for training for 2003 or 2004 and testing on another one. This is a typical uh, testing or this uh, scatter diagram for testing hurricane season on 2004 and model performance is showing good here around correlation 0.90. So this is on improving side rather we are validating our uh, results of obtained by this new technology or new technique.
this is time series typical time series plot we can see here this is complete entire data that was given for the training of the model and this was the unseen data on un unseen data and we tested model on this particular data so here you can observe that the water level is around 12 meter and it could model in training also equally good also in testing this is typical hurricane a1 where uh, this water level was around 8.77 meter and this could model by uh, GP technique around 8 meter. So we can see that this estimation is going to more and more approximation. This is again a scatter plot for the same. Sorry. Now recently I am just carrying out one study to incorporate the unseen observed or unobserved parameters at the station because normally we took the data related to the wear, wear order bio, where all observations are in, taken into account and then when you carry out sensitivity analysis then we can arrive for a particular cause effect parameters. But sometimes some parameters are un unobserved, cannot, cannot be recorded at the particular station. So in that case uh, I am developing one model, GP based model at one station, this is result for that one, taking into account wind speed, wind direction, wind gust parametric pressure as other four parameters, uh, usual four parameters used in uh, earlier study and then uh, observe previous heights or previous wave, uh, wave heights of one hour before, two hour before, three hour before and four hour before. I found that while training and testing the results uh, went up to correlation 0.99. So this is somewhat encouraging results by using GP approach. Now then another problem is real time forecasting of storm surges. So estimation is carried out by uh, some numerical method, can be carried out by some numerical methods also. But uh, there is yet to develop some system which can exactly uh, means uh, predict the values or water levels at some particular station during these events. Now these models are developed for the events, means uh, when a hurricane occurs and when level, uh, uh, rising levels uh, sustained for that particular period, how much will be the water level after 1 hour, 2 hour, 3 hour, 4 hour so that it would be easy for uh, the offshore operations to know exactly the water level after 6 hour, 12 hours like this. And here exactly we could model uh, the water levels up till 12 hours only because after 12 hours it was not possible to model the things. For this also we choose uh, stations, deep water, shallow water and near coast locations. Input for GP or ANN is given here as two preceding observations, uh, two preceding observations or two preceding uh, water levels. Now this we arrived to the conclusion after so many uh, trial and errors. So this is a typical graph. Here again the two events are tested and training was done on, uh, on three events. This we can observe here, after 6 hours also, it is giving exactly near about similar prediction. Sometimes over prediction by using this taking also can be accepted and this is on the positive side. This is another station, one hour ahead prediction. Equivalent study has been carried out using this three layered feed forward web propagation training uh, network and we got the similar results. This is for other station, station 6 hours. Here we can observe that. In fact, the predicted wave, uh, wave height or storm level is around uh, 9 meters. So, GP could predict this water level around 9 meters also. This is compared to study using both the models GP and ANN. Here we observed that up till 6 hours, this ANN and GP could predict water levels or uh, the storm levels quite good or uh, GP is having higher age, but after 6 hours, we found there is drastic drop down in correlation and uh, there is increase in error, error measurements compared to GP, uh, compared to GP. Hence, we can say that this GP model can predict water levels, uh, this storm water levels good up till 12 hours. After 12 hours, we tried uh, to model or to forecast the levels, but the results, rather the forecast was not proper, not exactly proper. So, we stopped up till 12 hours only. Then another exercise or this analysis special mapping of wave heights. Now special mapping of wave heights means when 
now this is a storm track for typical uh, rita event this is for katrina event now when this storm track travels or other uh, gets close to the coast we have to find out the time from station suppose 4201 4001 and 4205 and using input of water levels at 4201 4001 we can or we we predicted the water levels at 42035 so this is some sort of special mapping of storm surge but here we should know the exact time to reach uh, the event or that particular hurricane from one station to another station so these are again results which are very uh, good around uh, this uh, r is 0.99 and errors are also very less this is another interesting problem tsunami water level there is only one application as far as tsunami water level is concerned uh, not exactly to water level but to uh, for uh, what i can say travel type map which is recently uh, publication uh, published in uh, one of the um, journal but there are no applications as far as ANN and gp is concerned for such type of problem and this is very complex problem so we just try to model this uh, phenomena or we just try to predict the tsunami water levels uh, using this special uh, concept in the sense now we choose the study area where the this this is alaskan area and uh, this is honolulu point one of the point and this area is prone for the uh, sonomagnetic earthquake so most of the tsunami occurs over here in this area and propagates in different directions along the coast and uh, this is honolulu uh, rather uh, uh, it is like uh, yeah so the first event we took for june 19 uh, 10 1996 event and uh, the earthquake was around 7.9 of magnitude and another location another event was march 26 1964 which occurred in the same re same region and we studied propagation towards the coast and towards this uh, honolulu uh, harbor rather we choose the or the water levels were recorded at this different location these are the bottom pressure recorders water levels were recorded at this particular point and again the water levels were recorded in, in this region so after making some sensitivity analysis we we use the input water levels at these three stations 71 72 73 and predicted these water levels at this particular point where wave propagates because travel time maps are available for all coastline areas in the world so waves here propagates after four and a half hours so exactly uh, modeled by using GP and ANN. Now here we can observe that. Now the first part, the first part of the study was with inclusion of, without inclusion of tide levels because tides were removed and with inclusion of tide levels for what exactly the models can predict because uh, it was uh, rather uh, important to see how the model behaves when the tides are removed and how model behaves when the tides are uh, included now this is tip, this is one of the uh, case of march 1996 where prediction of water levels was made at this honolulu and the target that was the target station and initially we took water levels at this particular point three points only after that then for another event we took this one we got these results GP predicted R up till 0.8 then ANN very less 0.49 and then uh, we coupled the models whatever we got the outcome of ANN model that again modeled into GP and then we saw how much is the increase in uh, results or correlations or predictions so that went up till 0.86 and substantially the errors are also slightly reduced also this uh, study uh, the linear regression study is made but mostly we compare these models over here this is the typical time series plot and uh, scattered plot here you can observe that uh, it can or it could catch 
a trend for this extreme event also then another was case was with inclusion of tide and for with inclusion of tide we took the another target station of coastal location here because we modeled this study as per availability of the data and it's very much difficult to get water levels at all the stations as far as uh, this event is con concerned so we took this data uh, database from uh, net, uh, net and again we modeled uh, there are in input are slightly changed here sitka and equated as in uh, shown in earlier case we got this result of 0.84 here 0.71 67 compute here this model could not predict well combined model rather hybrid model but gp could predict well with inclusion of tides this is another event similar conclusions have been drawn now based on this four problems or other three problems for special mapping of uh, wave heights then tsunami water level predictions for uh, as a problem of special mapping and this storm surges real time forecasting and then uh, cause effect modeling and uh, uh, special mapping these are the conclusions application of gp to tackle problems in coastal engineering are not as common as the other technique like nn or gwa ga hence we try to fill this uh, void then estimation of storm surges wave heights and tsunami water levels by establishing special correlation temporal correlations and through cause effect modeling have been successfully carried out and in general gp can handle all these tasks satisfactorily its prediction capability many times exceeded that of ann sometimes we have seen the results of ann and gp are similar but in all the cases whatever study studied i carried out i found that the error measures as far as gp is concerned are always less compared to ann and in some situations where single gp or ann model doesn't work properly then we can combine uh, outcome of one model as a input to another model and then we can get best possible results also this was the first try to apply gp for so much complex problems because uh, as we see the gulf of mexico and number of events happening or occurring in that area now it was very much difficult to model uh, that event using this type of technique so here gp could satisfactorily learn the complex wave propagation as we can So we have seen already by some examples gp carried out auto regression well and predicted storm surge level based on a given such time series up to 12 hours out of lead time and the other uh, listed parameters are already covered here thank you that depth of water rather depth of water at that station location is given Sometimes when you uh, change the uh, data or uh, when same, you same same picture same input, the output may be slightly different from that what has been given earlier. Rain and water. No, I didn't get it properly. So when we feed the input data for rain and water, yes. it is uh, giving some kind of output. Yes. And the same input is given after uh, at a different time period or something like that. It may not be same result. No, same picture. No, it, it doesn't happen like this. Uh, see, uh, I don't know. You, I have not exactly understood your question. But what we are doing every time we are uh, giving a sequence of preceding values hmm, and asking the NN or GP to identify that sequence and uh, uh, continue identifying and forecast the next value. So as the sequence changes, the forecasted value will also change every time. It will also change every time. You have mentioned that the soft computing 
Okay. So whatever these techniques, ANN, Fertilogic and Genetic, these are only the sub-computing techniques or tools. Or can we include LP and DP into this? See, that's why, you know, I said that these exact definitions are very difficult to give. Basically, you know, traditionally soft computing techniques are identified with uh, functioning of human brain. People have taken inspiration from the way in which uh, our brain thinks or it does cognition and that process is imitated. But uh, these are actually, strictly speaking, these LWPR and, uh, you know, uh, what are the other things, this uh, support vector machine, etc. They should, they may, may not come under soft computing, but in general they come under machine learning or uh, data mining techniques or artificial intelligence techniques. Traditionally, the, they may not fall under soft computing. They, are more, they have more to do with uh, uh, developing, you know, some kind of uh, artificial learning or artificial intelligence process uh, rather than uh, you know, going by the traditional soft computing algorithms. So, can you use this technique uh, to find the sedimentation rate in reservoirs? Yes, it can be used. See, as, I, as he was mentioning, it can be, uh, be used for a variety of purposes. Uh, what you are saying is probably to work out a causal relationship, isn't it? Given a set of input para uh, causative parameters, you have an output or result or effect. And you can match those things using this technique. Then other techniques are, as he is suggesting, no, temporal. That means given a sequence of previous observations, forecast the next values. Then you have this, uh, what, a spatial relationship. Special. Right? Given the observations of values in different locations, uh, find out the value at some unknown location. Then, as I mentioned, a property integration, property resolution. Then all various techniques in which you can be different. Can you find the position of the uh, position of the Yes, yes, certainly. Then, Yes. In one of the in one of the graphs, yes. um, tables you showed that uh, comparison of various techniques that was regression, ANN, GP, a uh, work by again I suppose that was last time. Okay, okay. So it was like uh, regression was given quite low regression option was 0.77 for his data set. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to mention like in case of regression there are sometimes there are outliers which will consider into its model formulation. Whereas AN might, uh, AN normally removes those outliers also. There is a pre-processing of data. Is it there? Uh, we, we see, we, most of the studies did not involve the pre-processing in the way in which you were I mean, suggesting. Yes, we we don't data. purge any information. Okay. You know, we don't purge any information. We, we had a pre-processing only in the sense that we have categorized the data into monsoon, non-monsoon, and then you develop models separately or we have, uh, you know, uh, filled up the gaps, made, made the data more consistent and used. We have not removed any observations uh, as you have seen out there. But uh, I understand the point, you know, when regression techniques normally uh, get rid of outliers first and then fit the relationship. In uh, ANN and GP, what happens, you know, we normally uh, normalize the data into 0 to 1, that is still really taking care of these contracts in that way. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, there is no, you know, mandatory kind of pre-processing that is needed. Mm -hmm. So, if our data contains a larger footprint, then uh, we can use yes. out of the three GP, MP, and ANN. What is the best to use? See, this is what he was showing, you know, uh, there is no straightforward answer to this. But uh, the isolated studies done by these two people have shown that uh, um, uh, GP can, has a tendency to handle noise in a better way compared to the AN, isn't it? Uh, yes. In fact, uh, for small amount of data also, uh, I am going through that study, yes. but uh, in that study I found that for small amount of data, in fact, for training and testing, we are making divisions like 70, 30, 60, 40, 80, 20 like this. But when it comes to ANN and when, it, when you have a small amount of data, uh, ANN, ANN is not giving the same kind of uh, results for this type of division. But if you look at the GP, because I have uh, means carrying out number of problems, this type of study on number of problems, what you have studied here. So I found that 
even if you give gp as 80 20 or 60 40 or 70 30 the uh, performance of the model will remain same and ann is best uh, giving results in 70 30 data no, division in other words he is saying that uh, gp have it has a tendency to work with less amount of data equally satisfactory is what he is saying if you have if you reduce a small number of training data set gp can work better is what he is saying but again you know these are uh, very case specific observations i mean it should not be taken as a gospel truth they may change depending upon the data but our general observations are like this and as you as i have mentioned if it, the data are too noisy there if there are too random too many random variations then our experience is that gp works better then mt i don't think we have mt uh, yeah. that this data was a noisy one for uh, as far as the storm surge predictions were considered because uh, these locations were uh, deep water then near coastal and near coastal will find so much variations in all the parameters hmm. Suddenly there will be a jump in the value, and uh, one has to see how it is. So far, it never occurred in number of data sets. But if it happens, then we have to say, see whether by removal of those outliers, the result is still improved. But in our case, it is not. Should we ask about the remote uh, centers? Anything? the remote sensors okay thank you anyway i am always there uh, available on email in case anybody wants to carry my email off